Whew. So if you're anything like me, I know that Chinese New Year is around the corner when the Cheongsam feels just a little bit tight. But anyway, Cheongsam aside, I'm hoping all of you are enjoying your time with family, eating a lot and enjoying the time together. Um, to all of you celebrating. I'm definitely missing the Malaysian Chinese food, which is very specific such as yi sang, lo sang, I think that's not really common everywhere else and we didn't really realize that um, until I got here. But anyway, I also wanted to take this opportunity to answer one of the questions that came to me from Amy, so thanks for that. Uh, and this is a hard one, right? But it is one that's quintessential and that is, do I stay or do I go? I.e. I am passionate about something else and I'm thinking about leaving my nine to five job, but I don't know if this is the right time and what else should I be prepared for before I make the leap? And I think that this is a very hard question. I've had to answer this a few times in my life. Um, and especially not only leaving my old job, but leaving the entire country, uh, taking a leap of faith and starting a new career or continuing my career, but starting anew in a different way in an entirely new market, which I was not necessarily familiar with. Uh, did not necessarily have the context for then uh, and this was just about a year and a half ago bear in mind so it's been definitely a journey so anyway going back to the question i always advise people to think about number one if their passion project is really a passion project or if it is one that is sustainable and is something that you want to sort of continue on and is truly your mission right so the framework that I like to use is Ikigai. So what is your Ikigai where it is something you're passionate about, but not only passionate about, but something that you're good at and something that on top of that, you can make money from, right? So of course, if you're starting something new, if you're working in a startup, it's not always immediate that revenue comes through the doors. You have to work at it. Um, and of course there are startups that have raised high amounts of venture capital without revenue. Um, but think about all these things, right? How does this fit into the larger picture of your Ikigai and is it fulfilling your end mission? And that's a difficult one to answer because you don't always know what your end mission is, but I believe in the words of Oprah that everyone has a calling and you will feel it in your heart, in your soul, whenever you're doing that job, whenever you're doing whatever is necessary to make things happen. So perhaps you're doing something temporarily to get you to the next stage. And what is the next stage? The next stage is where you feel you've put the Lego blocks in place and that you're ready to take the next step, whether that's financially ensuring that you have enough runway to get you from month to month, uh, personally and also for the business or startup, whatever you choose to be doing. And that there is a clear path forward, even if it's not as straight and linear as it can be, you know that this is what I have to do and I'm all right to be taking this risk, you know, taking into account my own personal obligations, my family obligations, so on and so forth. But before you do that, I also think that it's important to take a step back and ask yourself about your full-time job, about your nine to five. Number one, is this current opportunity providing me exposure, contacts, uh, opportunities that I may not have otherwise and that sitting it out for a couple months or a year or so on and so forth will be beneficial to me right and number two are you also perhaps overreacting about a certain thing which makes you think that okay I want to move on to the next thing you know a loyalty to an organization is something that is hard to come by these days and I think that's a virtue that I personally aspire to have especially if someone has given me the opportunity to learn um, and to grow with an organization. And I think that a lot of us perhaps see outside opportunities as a lot better than what we have. And this is human nature, right? Where, you know, the grass always looks green on the other side. But I like the saying that the grass is indeed greener where you water it. So despite all the challenges, the difficulties and perhaps the environment that you're in. And I know we talked a little bit about the toxic work environment, which can come into play, right? Um, a few questions you have to ask yourself is, is this part and parcel of my learning? 
And do I have to stick it out to learn what I have to before moving on? Am I overreacting over things that just don't really matter? And am I still getting all that I want from this? And am I giving all that I can to derive as much as I hope, right? So a lot of times it's easy to look out and to sort of point the finger the other way. And I know this is cliche, but we make these mistakes, right? We're human beings that uh, things get too tough. We want to quit. But before quitting and before considering what's next, think deeply about these two things, right? So number one, if this is really your ikigai and there is a path forward for you, if this risk is one that you want right now and it makes sense right now, um, I'm all for taking risks. I did it myself basically about a year and a half ago where I decided to move to the United States and sort of take a pause and start my career anew in a whole different market, right? Where I had zero contacts and I had to build and work really hard to get to even where I am right now. And I, I don't think I'm anywhere done um, from what I have to do. But that is to say that, you know, risk is important. Um, be mindful of everything and ask yourself some very hard questions, including everything that we talked about. Um, hopefully that was helpful and I'd love to see what you think. And if you had asked yourself any other hard questions before you made your decision, um, chat below and speak again soon.